the Hall effect. When a magnetic field is applied perpendicular to the direction that a current is flowing, a voltage will appear perpendicular to both of them. This effect is named after its discovery in 1879 by Edwin Hall. Current, of course, is defined as the flow of positive charges. Even though in normal circuits it's the negative charge carriers, the electrons that are moving. The Hall effect, and this is the cool thing about it, can be used to prove that. There are certainly times when a current is a flow of positive charges. When would that be? Well, if you have particle accelerators and you're accelerating protons or positive atomic ions, then your current flow would actually be the flow of positive charges. A magnetic field is applied into the page. Right? These X's, that means you have a magnetic field in the vicinity of this circuit. So we've showed that. Let's get rid of that. Conventional current is defined as the direction positive charges would move. And here's our battery. And here's the positive end. So conventional current would go this way. We hook up a voltmeter to measure the potential difference between the top and bottom of the conductor. We've got this bigger piece of metal here, so we do have a, a difference in the y direction and size there. It's not just a little wire. So we have two cases here. Don't look at this as just one circuit. Just look to the left first. If positive charges are flowing, we're going to say this is what happens, and we'll explain it on the next few slides. However, if negative charges are really flowing, we expect to see this condition. So just split this down the middle, not both of these are true. Either this guy is true or this guy is true. Now, why does this voltage exist? You can see what we're showing here, hopefully. On condition one, we have positive charges up here, negative charges up here. So if you measured the voltage and you took this as your top lead, this is your bottom, you get a positive delta V. On the other side, somehow negative charges got up here. So if you measured the same way, hooked up the positive lead of the voltmeter and the negative here, you would read a negative voltage. Clearly both can happen. So either the left side is true or the right side is true. So let's first assume that we have positive charges moving and they move like that. They go into the magnetic field and they feel a force, QV cross B. So if you use the right hand rule, and the positive charges are going this way, the magnetic field is into the board, that will push the positive charges to the top, okay, leaving negative charges on the bottom. So let's just erase that. What does this separation of charge do? Well, it generates an electric field which will exert a force on these positive charges to direct them to the bottom. Okay, so the magnetic field pushes them up here but once I have that plus up here and minus here, I now have an electric field in this direction. So that wants to push the positive charges to the bottom. I have competing forces. The charges that are being fed here will stop moving in the vertical direction when the magnetic field force, which is up, so let me just draw a quick free body, when this, the force due to the magnetic field, is exactly matched by the force due to this generated electric field. If positive charges were moving, what would happen? We would have a positive voltage on this side. So when we measured it with the voltmeter, that would be our positive side. That would indicate that conventional current is actually reality. We would actually have positive charges moving this way. So let's wipe this out for a second and look at the right hand side. Let's assume that electrons are moving, okay, and they're moving in that direction. So they enter the magnetic field that is into the page. We do our right-hand rule, and if they were positive charges, the force would be down. But we have negative charges, so the force would be up. So the negative charges would be pushed up, and here this shows you negative charges, which means you would have positive down there. So let me just erase that. Now, if I have a voltmeter, I would measure a negative voltage up there, okay? That means the negative charges would deflect it up there by the magnetic field. And just like we did for the left side here, we'd have this electric field created, okay? And once the force of the electric field balanced the force of the magnetic field, 
the charges would just flow straight through this material. So in this case, if we have negative charges flowing, our voltmeter would read negative up there. If we had positive charges, it would read positive. So if this is a normal battery powered circuit, what do you expect the voltmeter to read? The voltmeter would read a negative voltage at the top of the conductor as negative charges are actually flowing as we talked about in the current unit. Electrons are moving. So what's really happening physically here, this is not true. So we're going to get rid of that. What we have, here's the battery, here's the plus side, here's the negative. Electrons are moving in that direction. So we talked about how, well, obviously electrons move because protons are too heavy. The atom's going to stay where it is. And we believe that when we said it. But isn't it nice that we have an experiment that can prove that? In addition to showing that the charge carriers were negative and therefore electrons, the Hall effect gives us a direct way to measure the drift velocity of the electrons. Here's the equation that we derived in the current unit for the drift velocity. The drift velocity is equal to the current in the wire divided by E, the elementary charge, the fundamental charge, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th, times N times A, the cross-sectional area. The problem is we can't directly, directly measure N, which is the amount of charge carriers. The Hall effect provides us the drift velocity in terms of measurable quantities. When the magnetic and electric forces balance out, the charges will flow straight through the plate with drift velocity V sub D. We invoke Newton's second law like we did a few slides ago. All right, the two forces balance out. One's in the up direction, one's in the down direction. We substitute in QVB and QE, and then right away we notice Q cancels out, which is great. And then we have E sub H equals VD times B. E sub H has a name. That's the electric field that is generated by the charge separation, and it's called the Hall field. We come down one more, and of course we have the V drift velocity because of right up here, the charges are just going straight through that little rectangular slab, and they're not going up or down anymore. Y is the width of the conductor, the slab, so delta V, the potential difference, is equal to the electric field times Y. And that also has a name. This potential difference has a subscript H. That is the whole voltage. So we substitute that into our equation, do a little tiny bit of algebra, and we find our drift velocity is equal to the whole voltage divided by the magnetic field times the width of our little plate. So this is a direct way to measure the drift velocity of these electrons, because you can measure the voltage, the magnetic field, and Y.